Good morning. How's the family this morning? Let's go, Lord. Let's go, Lord, in prayer. Father God, we come to you this morning. Father, we're just uh, so th- thankful and so humbled by uh, everything that you provide for us. Father, we pray that your uh, presence fill this building this morning. And Father, we do send this prayer up for you. Father, it is to encourage you and to be thankful to you for all you do for us. Father, I know things are going on in this world that hurt your heart. And Father, we pray. And we pray diligently to you, Father, that that we would encourage you. We know you know there's good people here and there's good things in this world, Father. And we pray that you continue to provide those for us. But, Father, we need to take time every once in a while for sure, Father, to recognize you in everything we do. So, Father, I pray this morning that uh, this message this morning would not only be for our congregation, but, Father, that it's it's a message to you also of how much we love you. Father, we pray you be with us this morning. We ask this in Jesus' holy and precious name. Amen. What a powerful song by Bradley Walker. I want to pray for God. You know, the fact is, uh, everyone always prays to God, but not for God. I found that when I heard the song and I started doing some research, I in preparing this message, I, I did a lot of research on the premise of praying for God. And you know, the internet's full of stuff. In all the research that I did, I could not find anything that talked about praying for God. There was plenty of stuff there that talked about praying to God and how we pray to God and we call on God, but not one thing about how we pray for God. I believe that one reason for this would be because God does not need help in doing anything. Maybe that's why we don't pray to God. He doesn't need our help, right? He can do everything. Reality is that we should be praying with God in an encouraging way. We always need to pray to God and be thankful, amen? And we do do that. But are we praying in a way to God that's encouraging Him That we appreciate what he's doing. Like the the song said there. It might bring a little smile to God. Knowing that we care enough to pray for him. Might put a little smile on his face right. Because you know everything he sees going on. With evil and corruption in this world. You know it hurts his heart. The Bible tells us. That there are things that happen in this world. That hurts his heart. So maybe even God needs a little encouragement. Yesterday, no, not yesterday, it was on uh, Friday, exactly, while on a fishing trip with Buster. Man, we were thankful for that day. Beautiful day, great weather, and the fishing was awesome. It was good. We better be praying for God and thanking Him for that. But we were discussing this subject. I brought this up to Buster, and Buster said it this way, and I love this. He believed that us praying for God reflects a love letter to the Lord. Oh, what great words. And I agree since I, many people feel that the Bible is God's love letter to us. So the communications, that was great words. And in fact, Buster's the one that said, you know, not only do we need to pray for God because many people don't think God needs our help. Maybe we need to pray, be praying with God in encouragement. And I agree. We overlook that sometimes. You know, to many people... Prayer can be a difficult thing for them to do. A difficult thing. Prayer can be very difficult for people. The number one reason that I've heard why people don't pray, especially in front of other people, is because they feel they don't know how to pray in the right way, and they'll mess it up. You will never mess up prayer as long as your motives are pure and you're not selfish. You will never mess up prayer. There's no bad prayer. Right? So that's not a good way of thinking. The simplest prayer means so much to the Lord. 
when I hear this and people say these things, well, you know, I don't know that I can get it right. I might mess it up or it might not sound right and all that. When I hear this, it reminds me of the word shared in Matthew chapter 6, verse 5, and that's where we're going to begin this morning. Matthew chapter 6, beginning at verse 5. And when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you pray, go into your room, close your door, and pray to your Father who is unseen. Then your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. And when you pray, do not keep on babbling like the pagans, for they think they will do... they. For they think they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask Him. Don't put on a show. Don't show me how well you need Scripture or how well you can pray. And don't babble on for an hour. God's got things to do. Right? Prayer doesn't have to be difficult. and It doesn't have to be long. And it doesn't have to be full of Scripture. It has to be a heartfelt love for the Lord and what's going on right then where you need help so prayer's not hard some people sit down and have a meal thank you Lord for this food and move on I've seen that done real simple it doesn't have to be difficult and people think that they think man I'm going to screw this prayer up who are you trying to impress right the Lord knows the heart so it doesn't matter what's going on there right the Lord knows the heart so your prayer can be that simple that he knows you mean well by it. There's no other motives. There's no selfish motives. It's simple and to the point. I'm recognizing, Lord, that you gave this to me. And you're with me. You know, sometimes a person will say, I've tried praying. But God didn't give me what I asked for. Maybe he didn't answer the prayers because they included things like this. Help me win the lottery. <laughs> you heard that one? Help me lose weight while I eat everything I want and I don't want to exercise. <laughs> Make me smart enough to pass this test that I didn't study for. Help me by paying my bills because I don't really like to work. <laughs> Come on. What are you praying for? What's the motive? And that, why didn't God answer those prayers? They're selfish. Right? There's a motive there. All of these are the wrong motives, and there are many, many more. God knows the difference between wants and needs. Knows the difference. Every prayer should be what God's will is for us. Amen? Not what our will is for us. We get a little confused on that sometimes. And every time we have prayer, it is our way of communicating with God. You should talk to God in prayer just like you would talk to you, your absolute best friend. Amen. Father, mother, whatever. That's how you talk to God. Don't treat him as he's this spirit in the sky that you really don't really know he's there. Or you're not really sure he's going to hear that prayer, right? Don't talk to him that way. Talk to him just like you talk to everybody else. Especially your best friends. Get on that level with God. Prayer is inviting God into our circumstances. In our hopes, into our fears, into our dreams, and into our pain. Prayer is not working your way through a grossly grocery list of requests that we desire God to perform or answer the way we expect Him to. God, we want this, but we want it our way, not yours. Prayer allows us to live in a relationship with God. And so many people, and I've heard this through all the time I've been in ministry, well, God never answered that prayer. I've heard of people praying, hey, I'm going on this trip, or I want to make sure I pray for God to 
allow me to go on this trip. And that never came into fruition for that person. And they were angry about that. And then they find out the people that climbed, climbed on that airplane, that airplane crashed and they didn't survive. God knows what he's doing and he knows everything for your life better than you do. Maybe he's steering you in another direction because it wasn't your time. It was his will for you to remain by not getting on that airplane. And that's exactly what happens. When we don't get our way, do we ever look and say, hey, something good came out of us not getting our way? Because God's not about our way. He's about his and his will, right? James chapter 4, verse 3 in the NLT says, Even when you asked, you don't get it because your motives are all wrong. You only want what will give you pleasure. That's true. Many times that's what we're after when we pray. Something that will bring us pleasure. And there's nothing wrong, get me, don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong with wanting good things in your life. But when you pray for something, make sure you're praying for God's will. Is this your will for me to have this? Is this your will for me to move forward, take this job for my family to be where they are and what's going on today? Is this your will, Lord? Because I'm praying for your will to direct me, not my will. Our prayer life should not be one that enriches us, but one that allows us to hear from God and aligns us with his will for our lives. Amen? You know, when Paul prayed for the people in Philippi, it was for the congregation that gathered with him and showed their love for Paul and their faithfulness to pray for him. Rather, Paul had a really great relationship with the people, with the Philippians. He had a great relationship. And when he visited with them, he loved being around them. So he, when they would pray for him, he, he knew it was, it was faithful and it was a truthful prayer. But in, a, in return, he prayed for them. Philippians chapter 1, verse 3. Let's go there. And in this scripture, Paul gives us a model of praying joyfully Philippians chapter 1 verse 3 Philippians chapter 1 being at verse 3 I thank my God every time I remember you and all my prayers for all of you I always pray with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now, being confident of this, that who who began a good work in you will carry it on to the completion until the day of Christ Jesus. It is right for me to feel this way about all of you since I have you in my heart. And whether I am in chains or defending and confirming the gospel, all of you share in God's grace with me. God can testify how long for all of you with the affliction of Christ Jesus and this, and this is my prayer, that you, your love may abound more and more in knowledge and depth of insight, so that you may be able to discern what is best and may be pure and blameless for the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. Paul loved these people. He had a heart for these people. And he knew that God was working with these people through him. So he tells us right there, he prayed, and he prayed. And it's, it, not only did Paul experience joy because he knew he wasn't alone, but he also, he prayed with confidence. It tells us he prayed with confidence, knowing that no matter what happened in his life or in theirs, it was God's will and God was working in their lives, right? So two things that are very, very important we learn. We need to pray with confidence, and we need to have joy in our prayers, no matter what the circumstances, Amen. So Paul did. He loved these people. He prayed with joy. He had confidence. So the question is, are we praying with joy and confidence when we have our prayers? Or we lift our prayers to the Lord? Every prayer should always be for God's will in every situation, no matter what the situation is. We should also have the faith and believe that God hears our prayers. The faith and believe God hears our prayers. Prayer without faith is useless, right? I've heard people say that. Well, I said my prayers, but I'm not sure if God's really going to do that for me. Okay, so he's not. 
I can tell you it's real simple. He's not. You just threw it away. You just, you just voided that prayer. Because you don't believe the prayer is going to come true, right? Wasted prayer. You say, no, there's no wasted prayer. That one was. If you pray in that way, God will not respond to you. He's not going to hear that. You've got to believe those prayers. In all my time in ministry, I've seen prayer work. I know prayer works, and God hears prayers when they're for the right reasons and the right motives, right? I know there's people throughout this building right now that can testify to that. We've seen the hand of God upon many people in this church. And we've seen this church pray so hard for so many people in situations that God has lifted them out of their problems. And even healed people. But we had to pray for God's will, not ours. Amen? You know, there are things in your house that works because of electricity. Did you realize that? Electricity is an invisible power that gives you visible privileges. It turns the lights on, turns the TV on, turns the toaster on, turns the oven on. All that stuff is working in your house because you've got one invisible power shooting through all of it called electricity. But none of those things work, even though they have access to electricity, until you flip the switch, right? You've got to make a connection before the stuff that's there will even work. Every believer in Jesus Christ has that stuff that works. Ooh, that's good. We got lots of stuff that works. Prayer is like electricity because it empowers us by connecting us to the source of that power. What? That's a good analogy, right? Until we flip the switch with, with our prayers, we're not going to have any changes in our lives, right? When you flip that switch, the Holy Spirit says, come on, right? Fires right through your body and gets you excited because that's when we know the Holy Spirit's working as the Holy Spirit is that power and that electricity that just goes through us and gets us encouraged. Makes us feel really good. Prayer to God is our switch, and we need to use it. And we need to use it more often. Otherwise, we're just running around in the dark, right? Lost. Have you ever cared about someone so much it hurts? I've been there. I've been there. You know, it's very, very hard for me to learn to forgive God when my dad died. Very hard. I was pretty bitter. And I blamed God. Sure did. But you know, today, people tell you that I can thank God for that opportunity that he used my dad's death in a way to turn my head around and face him. He did. Because it's all about Reg. Reg thought he could do anything. He could fix anything. He didn't need no prayer. He didn't need God. He could handle it all. Ooh, God humbled me. And if it wasn't for that, God's will in my life, I wouldn't be standing up here today. I can assure you that. Still be doing that probably that same old thing I was doing in the past that wasn't getting me anywhere. So that's hard to pray and thank God for things like that, isn't it? Some of you probably have that same thing going on. I'm still a little angry at God. He did this. He did that. Thank you, Lord, because I know something good's coming out, something bad every time. And that's what's happened in my life, and I'm sure all of you. So if you've ever cared about someone so much it hurts, someone that you just want to spend time with constantly because you enjoy their company, you know, you just enjoy being with, with them or around them, there's an old Motown hit song called Ain't No Mountain High Enough. Some of you have probably heard that before, and it describes the power of love drawing two people together, no matter 
what the obstacles were. And when we really love someone, it can physically hurt to be away from them. Physically hurt to be away from them. You know, my wife took a new job. I'm used to her being there every day, all day long, whenever things are going on. These past two weeks, she's missing. That means i got to do a lot of honeydews that honey don't want to do. <laughs> but I miss her. It's different. And that's kind of the same way our love for the Lord should be that strong. We should never allow any obstacles of any kind to separate us from our love for the Lord. Never, ever. We are headed for the day Christ returns. We need to be ready. But being ready doesn't mean just believing. Being ready means that we should bear fruits of righteousness that brings joy to our lives and glory to the Lord as we wait on that return. God wants joy in your life. He truly does. Sometimes we think, man, we're going through all this stuff. How could God want joy in our lives? He does. Through some of the struggles, we may not feel that way. But every time an affliction, a burden, or a trial comes upon us, it's there for a reason. You may not see that at this time, but it strengthens us. Sometimes it draws us closer to the Lord. Sometimes we just have to hit rock bottom and get on our knees and know the only, the only good way to get anything done is up, right? Sometimes we lose sight of that. Prayer is our constant communication with God. Constant communication. Because we know God wants a relationship with us. A personal relationship with us, not a part-time one. There's nothing wrong with praying for things, nothing at all. As long as our motives are right. And we ask that it be his real will that it become a reality. So there's nothing wrong with praying for things. Once again, remember your motives. Remember, are you being selfish? Do any of you recognize, any of you recognize the name Corey Ten Boone? Some of you may know who I'm talking about there. Corey Ten Boone was a Dutch Christian watchmaker. And later a writer who worked with her father, Casper Ten Boone her sisters Betsy Ten Boone, and other family members to help many Jews escape the Nazis from the Holocaust during World War II by hiding in their home. She believed that her actions were following the will of God. They were caught. She was arrested and sent to Ravensbrück concentration camp. Her most famous book, The Hiding Place, some of you may have read, is a biography that recounts the story of her family's efforts and how she found hope in God while she was in prison at the concentration camp. She'd been through a lot. She shared these words, There are no ifs in God's world, and no places that are safer than any other places. The center of his will is our only safety. Let us pray that we may always know that. Amen. Good words. From a lady that's been there through a lot. The Lord is our only constant in a life that will be full of trials, joys. May we always find refuge and comfort in the Lord. Psalms 46, chapter 46, verse 1 says, God is our refuge and our strength and an ever-present help in trouble. Amen. When things are going on, you know, we have friends, we have neighbors that we can call on. But they're not always the answer. They may be a temporary help, but that solid help you need, that solid uh, questions answered that you need come from the Lord and his, His Word. We can call on each other to be lifted up, and that's great as Christians to be brothers and sisters in Christ. But always remember, the number one, the number one is Jesus Christ, not not your neighbor or your friends or your family. 
Answered prayers come from requests many times that we may not understand why requests are denied sometimes. But once again, there's a purpose. The hardest thing for me to do and many of you to do in every situation is pray for God's will. I know that for a fact because we always want it our way and we want our will, right? Only you and the Lord know what your prayer life looks like. Maybe you need to evaluate what your prayer life does look like. When I get up in the morning, I have prayer. When I go to bed at night, I have prayer. There's one thing my wife shared with me. She said, the times that she feels closest to me is when I pray with her. Are you listening, guys? The time she feels closest to me is when I pray with her. And I did that from time to time. You know, I did that a little bit here, a little bit there. She started to work. She's driving to Corsicana every day, doing all that. Man, I'm not a morning person. This girl's up at 4 o'clock. So right before she leaves, I get out of that bed and I pray with her. And I don't intend to miss that. Because if that's all it takes for her to feel close to me, I want to keep that. And I believe those prayers that I send out for protection for her and her to be able to witness to somebody else and have a great day. I believe that's very important and I believe God hears that prayer and he's going to answer it. So far it's been great, right? Things are great. Try that. You need to be like a lot of these ladies, guys. When they get up in the morning, the devil says, oh no, she's up. This is going to be a rough day. Do we do that, guys? I know when my wife gets up, he goes and hides. This isn't going to be a fun day at all. Say your prayers when you get up. When you look in the mirror, thank God that you're there looking in the mirror, right? But make sure you acknowledge him. Pray to God and encourage him. Pray with God. And say, I'm thinking about you today. I know everything you're dealing with. And I know things that's going on in this world hurts your heart. But I'm going to lift you and encourage you in my prayer today. Not everything about me. Try that. Not only will that make you feel great, it'll make God feel great. Amen? Whatever it is, whatever your prayer life looks like, I hope you'll include a prayer for God that might just bring a smile upon his face. Knowing that your love is not just for the things of this world, but to confirm your love for him as you walk through this life. Amen? Let's pray. Father God, we come to you this morning. Father, once again, we are so thankful. Father, we feel your presence just throughout this building. Father, I thank you for everyone here. They're just the love they show for each other. And as we um, come together and praise of you and brothers and sisters just visiting with one another and sharing our burdens and praying for one another. Father, I thank you. What a family. What a family. Father, these are the things that are missing in many people's lives, but we understand you're the head. You're the Father. That all this comes about because of you, not because of us. So, Father, this morning I pray for you and encourage you. I pray that we bless you by acknowledging you in everything we do. Father, I pray for this congregation, this family group here today that... uh, I'm thankful for them that they took time to come and be in worship and praise to you this morning. I pray today as they leave here that their day will be just joyful. And Father, that they'll, anyone that struggles with that prayer, that they'll uh, find a way to pray to you with joy and confidence that they know you're the need in their life. Father, we love you, we praise you, and we pray today that everything we said, everything we did was uplifting, pleasing, and glorifying to you. We ask this in Jesus' holy and precious name. Amen.